Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Air Team Institute with this week's Thursday tidbit where we're going to be talking a bit about integer solutions to equations such as ax plus by equals c. So these are linear equations but we're mostly focused on integer solutions today. Let's look at a simple example here. So suppose we have x plus 3y equals 4, right? This is a line. It has a slope of negative 1 third. If you want to rewrite it in standard form to look at the graph and think about it. But we can write it here as x plus 3y equals 4. So a is 1, b is 3, and c is 4. In this way, we're thinking about it there. Now, there are definitely infinitely many solutions for x and y. In fact, there are infinitely many integer solutions for x and y. But it's still a little bit interesting, right? As far as regular solutions, if I give you any x value, you can tell me the y value. Or if you give me any y value, I can tell you the x value that goes along with it. Right? That's not the case for integer solutions. For example, if x equals 0, y is equal to 4 thirds. So we don't have an integer solution that way. Right? But we want to come up with a way to describe the integer solutions here. We're going to revisit this, but let's just try to do the original pattern or an initial pattern we can kind of think of in this case. So it's pretty easy to say that when x is 4, y is equal to 0, right? So we definitely have an integer solution here of 4, 0. Now, thinking about this as a linear equation, thinking about this with slope can really help in this case. I mentioned that the slope was negative 1 third. Remember that means the change in y is negative 1 if the change in x is 3. So this can actually get us more integer solutions, right? You can always think about this. So we have our negative 1 down, right? Minus 1 in the y direction and the plus 3 in the x direction. So this will give us something like 7 negative 1. And of course, this can kind of go in reverse as well. If we want y to go up 1, then x needs to go down 3. So we can have a minus 3, a plus 1, and then we have another solution here. So this point is, of course, the point 1, 1. And you could continue this as long as you want. All right, so we kind of hopefully can start to see the pattern here of how using this basic picture of slope we are going to get infinitely many solutions. And in a few slides, we'll kind of describe how to do that as an equation as well. But this is really our general idea for coming up with a solution. So we find one solution and then say, OK, how can we modify that solution to find others? Now, this is just a simple example of a whole class of equations or a whole class of kind of things that are studied, which is called a Diophantine equations. The study of this is Diophantine equations is a topic in number theory, right? So it's a little different than normal equations, right? Normal equations would be algebra. We're just looking for solutions, but here we want integer solutions. That's the kind of special thing we want here. Very famous ones like we just see linear equations ax plus by is c, right? You might recognize here if n is 2 in the second one, this is the Pythagorean theorem. So there's a lot of stuff with Pythagorean triples, right? 3, 4, 5 triangles, 5, 12, 13 triangles. Those don't have to be integer solutions, but if you're more interested in the number theory stuff, you can go along with kind of looking for patterns in the kind of numbers where they're integers. Actually, this is famous for n greater than 2. x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. x to the fourth plus y to the fourth plus z to the fourth. Right? That's actually kind of Fermat's last theorem that was studied for hundreds of years, kind of looking for a, a true proof of that. We also have x squared minus n y squared is plus or minus 1. This is kind of called Pell's equation. 
right? So oftentimes these crop up, like Fermat's last theorem even, right? Can you find two numbers that their cubes is equal to, right? The sum is equal to a third number, that cube, right? Very simple to ask, As x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. Right? Sometimes they are puzzles, right? Sometimes you can just find a solution and be kind of make it obvious that it's the only solution or find infinitely many solutions. But actually a lot of these things, right, for like Fermat's last theorem or other kind of Diophantine equations, actually have kind of surprising depth. If you really start to solve them, you actually can use very advanced number theory techniques to kind of approach them and work with them there. So actually Diophantine equations, right, specific kinds, right, it's always on a case-by-case -case basis, but some of those are kind of studied to this day and something you can really get into advanced number theory if you really kind of start thinking about it a little bit more there as well. Let's go back then to our simple one for today to start with, x plus 3y equals 4 again. And just as a kind of way of thinking about this and a way of writing out the integer solutions, right, we started there at least with one solution. We had 4 and then when x is 4, y is 0. And just one way to think about turning our little picture of rise over run, the arrows on the graph, into kind of a way where we're explaining all of the solutions, you'll typically write it as kind of follows, right? We were kind of saying over there, if x kind of increased by 3, so we could think of this as, okay, what if we want to add 3 times some integer in this case, right? So here k is kind of an integer in this scenario. So we always want to have k being an integer. So we're kind of turning it into, okay, given an integer, if we say like negative five or zero or five or 37, we can get an x value and then a corresponding y value. Remember we said if x increased by three, y decreased by one. So we could kind of write this as x is 4 plus 3k and then y is 0 minus k or just kind of minus k in this scenario. But I want to leave it written like this because this is kind of a format or a way I'm going to want us to think about later examples and is really the way you can solve all of these questions as well. You start with one solution, so here we have 4, 0, and then you kind of describe with a parameter, so with like a plus k or plus 3k or minus k, how to kind of change those answers to get additional answers as well. Okay, now let's look at another one and see if we can kind of follow this same pattern. Well, we have 3x plus 6y equals 4. Now, not going to let us spend too much time thinking about this. A lot of you probably already are yelling at your screens right, right away with a problem here. Notice that no matter what, this number here is divisible by 3. Right Here's where we start to see a little bit of number theory stuff cropping up. Right, we have 3x plus 6y, so we could pull out the 3, right? This is 3 times x plus 2y. That's always going to be divisible by 3. It's always going to be a multiple of 3, right? And so is 4 divisible by 3, right? No, right? 4 is not divisible by 3. And so in fact, we have no solutions. There are none in this case. There's no integers x and y where 3x plus 6y equals 4 here. So this is one big difference of those kind of linear equations. This kind of is fully solvable with a line. If you have fractions, right, there's not like a no solutions here if we graphed this, but there actually are no integer solutions in this case. So this is one of the studies then of Diophantine equations, right? When are there solutions? Are there no solutions? Are there infinitely many solutions? How do we find the solutions, etc.? 
So when are we kind of finding solutions? When do we run into problems like we have here? It's actually kind of pretty simple, right? The simple fact you need is we're going to need C to be a multiple of the GCD of A and B. So again, this is where the number theory stuff comes in. So in that example, the GCD of 3 and 6 is, of course, 3, and 4 is not a multiple of 3. Right, if the GCD is 1, then we're good always. If the GCD is 2, then we have to equal a kind of even number, etc. in that case. Now, we're not going to worry too much about a proof of this today. But kind of the main fact is this multiple thing, right? Because you can always make the equations bigger by multiplying both sides by something. And so the special case where AX plus BY is actually equal to the GCD of A and B. That equation is famous enough that it has kind of a name and it's kind of basically a theorem. This is called Bezos identity or kind of Bezos lemma or things like that, right? Which always states there's an integer solution to AX plus BY is equal to this GCD. So now we kind of know when there are no solutions and then we've seen slightly the kind of general method and we'll look at that in one more example as a way to kind of hammer home how we kind of solve these in general when we can. So you can solve it when C is a multiple of the GCD A and B and then let's see again how that works in that case. Now want to be a little bit careful here because I want to point out and do a slightly first thing that we need to be worried about in this case. You always should simplify your equations first. So as soon as we see this, we can rewrite this as 2x plus 3y is 7. So I want to start by dividing both sides by 2. This is, makes it easier when we're kind of finding all of the solutions and looking for stuff there. So kind of just start by simplifying your equation. Before you do anything else, divide by any common factors or stuff like that there. Now, again, we start by kind of looking for a initial solution in this case. There are some general methods or tricks for finding those solutions, but typically it's just mostly easiest to just guess, right? You look at this, okay, we have twos and threes. How can we make twos and threes go to seven? Well, seven isn't a multiple of three, but if we th subtract three from seven, we get four. Hey, that's two times two. So you can pretty easily see that this has a solution of two and one. Note you could do other ones here, right? So go back at the end of this video and kind of think of other examples of a initial solution and convince yourself that you actually still get the same full set of solutions here, right? Then our plan is as before, we're gonna have some K that is an integer in this case. And so we can again think of this as slope or kind of stuff like that. But the other way I kind of like to think about this is kind of how many twos are equivalent to some number of threes, right? So we can write down kind of the silly equation here. Two plus two plus two, that is six, the LCM of two and three, which is equal to three plus three. So the reason I kind of like thinking about it that way as well is that this can kind of help us with the plus k's, minus k's, and stuff like that there. So suppose I want to add some 2's to my equation. Really here I want to add 3 2's, right? 2 plus 2 plus 2. I want to add 3 2's. Well to do that I have to get rid of 2 3's. Right, three plus three, we have two threes in that case. So again, our pattern then becomes, you find a first solution, x is two, y is one, 
And then thinking about the slope or thinking about replacing our kind of twos by threes or threes by twos, right? We can say if I remove two threes, I have to add in three twos. And that's where we get kind of this general solution of x is 2 plus 3k and y is 1 minus 2k for any integer you plug in there, right? So for any integer value you take, you can plug it in and you'll get an x value and a y value that are integers and that are a solution to our 4x plus 6y equals 14 equation there. Thank you guys for watching. Check back each Thursday for a new math tidbit. I suggest you do some kind of more research on Diophantine equations is this, if this is interesting to you. And for more kind of math practice, more puzzles, more kind of daily problems, check out zimmel.airteam.org for more practice and stuff that way. If you like this video, it'll help out if you like it and subscribe using the button below. And I will see you guys all next Thursday. Goodbye.